Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what foreign investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only, future results not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forex technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and inside bar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As always, we're starting off with the gold daily chart, and what we what we said was here we broke the 20, likely move is to the 50. Here on our descending wedge, likely break was to the 200 and look at this price action today now of course this is a hammer but look at that right down to the 200 moving average right back up so it's going to be interesting to see where we go here um, some aggressive bulls are going to say hey this is a hammer if we get above 1640 ish uh, that is a hammer we that's above the high of Monday let's take a move up um, but again that's very <laughs> very aggressive We'll have to see. As we look at our one hour time frame, you, we can see that a lot of volume here has accumulated between 1590 and 1630. So, you know, that kind of uh, equates to if we can get above this into the 1640, we can possibly get a run, possibly make a run up into the 1740. There's not a lot of resistance, volume resistance in this price area. So, uh, sort of a week to sideways day for gold means what for our dollar currency pairs? First, starting off with the euro, and we can see that although we violated the support at 1.347, we're still kind of hovering around there, kind of breathing, digesting what happened. We can see we are basically on the edge here of a buy in neutral zone. We're still below our long term moving average. And we can see ever fractionally the euro took control, mainly because even though the euro is averaging down, the dollar, which was going sideways and up and then starting to going down and, and went sideways, at the end of the day here, really kind of fell off here. We can see that the buyers are still in control, but the sellers are getting ready to take control on this one. So if the dollar takes control of this, we will see this. Pair begin to move lower. If the euro can find some strength, we'll see this pair move higher. And the thing to watch on the daily here is we can see the wicks are here. So once we get around 1.56, you know, that's above the wicks. You can see the wicks here again. We get above that, and maybe we'll start to retest some of this action from last week. Here we are on the pound dollar. Notice that this one's already making a move up off of the bounce here, a little bit stronger. Also, we can see below our long-term moving average, it's also in a buy zone. However, what's interesting about this is it made this move higher with the dollar in control. Now, that's interesting because the dollar in control should move the pair lower. We can see the pound averaging lower. We can see the dollar averaging lower. However, it just kind of went sideways, so maybe that's why. Uh, even though the dollar was in control, we got a, a, a move up here. Uh, we can see ever so fractionally the buyers in control as we are in neutral. So if the, the, the pound can move up here and take control, we will continue to see this move higher. However, if the dollar is going to stay in control, we may come back and retest the lows. Finally, with the dollar franc, we're seeing we've entered the new price action range. We've gone sideways here for three to four days. Um, a lot of volume here. That's great. And we can see what we probably want to do go is start to see this price action right in here around 1.9. If we get below that, 
that's where we could start to retest the 200 moving average here on the daily. So I'm going to come back in here and put this in here at about 0.9. Let's see. That's a little bit lower. Um, otherwise, you can see the choppiness here. We are in a neutral zone. We are above the long-term moving average now. We can see that Frank took control, which is causing the price action to move down. However, they're snaking. We got some parallel action, which is why we have the consolidating over the past couple of days. Frank moving down, but beginning to uh, go sideways a little bit up. And the dollar kind of going whippy, which is, again, why we're seeing this whippy action here. And we can see ever so slightly the buyers have taken control. As we come to our watch list today, we're starting off with our low volatility watch list, which is our one hour time frame using Bollinger Bands. For that, we're going to continue to watch the Aussie dollar as it continues to consolidate within a range. Or inside our watch list, watching Monday's range as compared to Friday. And we can see that we were watching the dollar yen. As we come to our, econ to our education spotlight, we continue to talk about trading plans and what should be components of it. And we talked about that having a trading plan helps us overcome our fears. But even though we overcome our fears, we do have to accept the fact that losing a trade that's not going to work out is a part of our reality. There is no perfection in trading. Some trades work, some trades don't. And what you want to do is create what we call positive expectancy. And that is, as we document and backtest our trading plan, we want to see how many winners there are compared to losers. And based upon your risk tolerance, your stops, you want to make sure that your wins are outweighing your losses. There's nothing like uh, one loss wiping out three wins. So that allows us to accept the fact that looting is a part of our, our trading system and that we have to account for losses. And then uh, we have a great a part of our, our, our tutorial where we talk about the actual business plan and you have to factor in you know, your percentage rate. But again, that allows us to understand, accept, and believe the fact that all trades will not work and we factored in or we priced in so that our wins continue to outweigh our losses. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a great five-course uh, video which talks about high probability trading, which will give you insight to who we are as coaches. We can work with you one-on-one, -on -one, help you develop that personalized trading plan, help you develop that positive expectancy on your trading setup so that you can accept those losses knowing that your wins are going to outweigh them. And if you're trading Forex, why not get paid to trade rebates for your Forex trades? And finally, if you want signals, we have that for you also. A bunch of providers, find the one that matches you, your risk tolerance, your trading plan. Have it trade automatically or get the signals to trade for yourself. Because in the end, it doesn't make a difference about your indicators or your trading system if you can't pull the trigger because you're, you're scared to lose. Losing at some point in time is a part of the game, or as we say, it's the cost of doing business. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.